Hello, and in this IELTS speaking video, I will discuss a newly built public facility such as a park, cinema, etc. that influences your city. You should say where this facility is, when it was built, what people can do there, and what influence this facility has. Now, there are very few newly built public facilities Actually, there are no newly built public facilities where I live, and I imagine it is the same for you. So I'm actually talking about a public facility that already existed, but it has been renovated, and that means it has been improved. At the end of the video, I'll look at a couple of part threes as well. To be honest, I was struggling to think of a new public facility because there is not a great deal of development happening where I live. After the economic downturn in the last decade, a lot of development and redevelopment stopped because there is no public funding for such things. For that reason, I'm going to talk about an existing public swimming pool, which has been around for many years now, but has undergone a period of renovation in the last couple of years. I can't recall precisely when it was built, but it was quite a while ago. But, like I said, it has been revamped. Because it was an ancient building, it needed a lot of TLC, and it was becoming a risk to the public, so the local council decided to close it down. When the general public heard that it was at risk of closure, there was a public outcry and people started a petition to keep it open. The reason why it is a much-loved place is that there are very few places in my town that are publicly funded and few can afford to go to the expensive, flashy pools and gyms in the city. The entrance cost was cheap, and for those on a limited budget, it was a great place to take your kids in the school holidays. When the local council realised how furious people were about the proposed closure, they decided to see if they could find a way to keep it open. There were some fundraising activities and a number of local businesses donated money. Within a short space of time, roughly six months, enough money had been raised to get the repairs done. Not only that, but there was money left to buy some new equipment for the fitness centre. These renovations have vastly improved the place and it has become popular with not just families, but people in their 20s who use the gym to get fit. So let's take a look at the language and in a lot of these topics, it is very difficult to think of something. So to be honest, I was struggling to think of is a very useful way to start your answer. There is not a great deal of. A great deal of means a lot. Very useful for writing and speaking after the economic downturn in the last decade. This means where the economy was not as good as it was previously. It was suffering from um, a lot of bad debts and people were losing their jobs and so many, many countries around the world have experienced an economic downturn. The economy has gone down. And a lot of development and redevelopment. This means where buildings are improved and renovated. Very useful for writing, public funding. This is money from the government, which is given to certain projects, such as building new public facilities. There's also public funding in the UK for education, for the police, for the National Health Service. But because of the economic downturn in my country, and I imagine in your country as well, there was no public funding, no public money available to build such facilities. So an existing, so although it's saying a newly built, if you cannot talk about this, then you have to change the topic slightly. And as long as you're still connecting it to the topic in some way, that's fine. So an existing, one that already exists, but it has undergone a period of renovation. 
the verb to renovate means to improve and to make it better. So it's undergone, it's experienced a period of renovation, a period of improvement. Remember to use things like, I can't recall precisely when. So don't say it was built in 2019. It's much more complex. I can't recall, I can't remember precisely, exactly. Quite a while ago. So this means kind of, yes, yeah, so quite a few years ago. Like I said, good discourse marker. It has been revamped. Another word for renovated is revamped. Ancient, very old. Useful acronym here. You can use it to describe um, people when they need some TLC. And it means tender, loving care. And it means some care and attention to, in this case, the building. It needed some love, some care to improve it. If you're feeling really tired and upset, you've had a bad week, you need some, uh, some TLC, some tender loving care. It was becoming a risk to the public. It was becoming a danger. The local council in the UK, we have the central government, but then each area has a local council which decides how the money is spent. To close it down, to shut it down, the general public, people like you and me, at risk of closure, so there was a chance it was going to be closed. A public outcry. This is when the public, people like you and me, say this is not acceptable. We do not want this to happen and people get very angry, so we call it a public outcry. People started a petition to keep it open. This is where um, somebody decides this is not acceptable so I'm going to get a lot of names and signatures from people to say this is not acceptable and then in the UK if you get a petition I think it's of about 100,000 names and addresses and signatures then the government has to look at it the, gov the government has to consider it so people started this petition to show that people were angry. A much loved place, people loved it a lot. Publicly funded, this means the money comes from people's taxes, so it's funded by the government, but really it's funded by the taxpayers. And few can afford, remember to drop the people, many, few, you can drop people, few can afford to go to the expensive flashy pools. These are kind of the luxurious, you can see a lot of money has been spent on developing them. The entrance cost, the cost to go in. For those, for those people on a limited budget. Your budget is how much money you have to spend each month. So if you earn a thousand dollars, then after you take your money out for your rent and for your car and you have to budget how much money you have left and if you are on a limited budget you don't have a lot of money to spend. A useful synonym here for angry, furious, um, so I'm furious about something. The proposed closure when something has been suggested, we call it proposed Fundraising activities, activities that raise money, to donate money, to give money, within a short space of time, very useful for writing and speaking, and it means kind of quickly, roughly about six months, and some good grammar here, enough money had been raised to get the repairs done. So improvements, renovations have vastly improved vastly improve means improve a lot so that's a very good collocation so let's take a look now at a couple of part threes connected with this answer in the pdf there are i think there are four answers i'm only going to go through two of them here but make sure you read the other questions and answers in the pdf so if you get this topic they might ask you what measures should be taken to deal with damage to public facilities and in the image, you can see an example of some damage to a public facility. It can be graffiti. It can be breaking windows. It can be vandalism. 
So these are the kind of things that happen to public facilities. Nowadays, damage or vandalism on any public property or private property is not taken as seriously as it should be. So this is very true for my country, that if there is graffiti, vandalism, damage, the police are not really interested. It's not taken as seriously as it should be. Sadly, the police are snowed under with work and are dealing with more serious crimes, so vandalism often gets overlooked. The first thing you should notice, the police are. In many languages, the police is singular, and it is singular in English. But often, when we have um, something like the police, like a football team, we think of them as lots of individuals, so we often use them with a plural verb. If you use singular or plural, it doesn't matter. Both are acceptable in English. The police are snowed under with work. Excellent idiomatic expression can be used to talk about yourself. I am snowed under with work, and it means very, very, very busy. So vandalism often gets overlooked. If something gets overlooked, it means it's not looked at, it's not considered, it's not classed as important. I feel that we should have a zero tolerance policy and the costs of any repairs should be paid by the perpetrator of the damage. Right, the perpetrator of the damage is the person who caused the damage. So like the criminal, the person who caused the damage. A zero tolerance policy. This means that you do not accept any bad behavior. You do not tolerate, you do not put up with, you do not accept any bad behavior. So, you know, the slightest thing that somebody does, if somebody drops litter, you punish them. This is a zero tolerance policy. It doesn't happen in the UK. We don't have the funding. We don't have the money. We don't have the police resources to do this. So crimes are classed as not being that important. So if you commit something like vandalism, you're probably not going to go to prison. But what I'm saying is we should have a zero tolerance policy and the costs of the repair should be paid by the perpetrator, the person who has caused the damage. What's the difference between facilities in the countryside and the ones in the city? Well, obviously, the major difference is that there are very few facilities in rural areas. So always when you're talking about countryside, cities, try to paraphrase these in rural areas, in the countryside. Public facilities are not built in villages because there is not enough footfall and it would be a waste of money. Footfall is the number of people entering a business, shop or shopping area in a given time. In city centres, there is not as much footfall as there used to be because now people go to out of town retail outlets and shopping malls. So the footfall in city centres has dropped. You could use this as an argument um, about the environment. Cars should be banned in city centres. On the one hand, it might increase footfall because there are no cars there, so you can walk more easily. But on the other, people don't want to go there because you can't take your car into the city. And so it actually has had a negative effect on footfall and people will go to out of town shopping centres because there's more parking and it's easier to get to. In a major city, you can find everything from swimming pools to libraries, but such places are non-existent outside of urban areas. So cities, urban areas, non-existent, very useful adjective, do not exist. So often IELTS questions ask you things in your, about things in your country, but they're non-existent in your country, like newly built public facilities are non-existent in my hometown. I live in a village, that, so any public facilities are non-existent. We don't have a shop, we don't have a pub, we don't have anything. So remember to look at the extra part three question and answers in the PDF, and thank you very much for watching.